we're going to start. Good morning, Trinity. Happy New Year to everyone. One announcement, uh, we are for one more Sunday today, we are collecting for the fifth Sunday discretionary fund, both funds and food. There's a uh, grocery cart in uh, Narthex there if you have any food with you or if you brought any, we appreciate it. Please rise and greet each other with a smile and a happy new year. We will begin our service in God's wonderful house. Please join us in song as we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. to this place, allow us to worship you as they worshiped you, humbly, certainly with joy and exhilaration and exuberance. They praised you. They gave gifts to you. Oh Lord, what we bring, what we give is so small in comparison to what you've given. But like they, they simply bring something to share, to say thank you, Jesus. And we stand here today knowing that our sins have been forgiven, to hear that you have forgiven us and have come to save us. And here in this place, your spirit has led us. So Jesus, we celebrate and give you thanks this epiphany. We've come to see Jesus. Amen. You may be seated. We continue in song. Please join in. Rejoice, all the earth rejoice. He 
Invite this morning's reader up. Morning, Mike. Morning, Clay. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to all. Good morning, folks. Good morning. Happy New Year to y'all. The Old Testament reading is from Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will be seen upon you. And the nations shall come to your light, and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around, and see they all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from afar, and your daughters shall be carried on the hip. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and exult, because the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall bring good news, the praises of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson in the epistle is from Ephesians 3. For this reason I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, assuming that you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelations as I have written briefly. When you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men, and other generations as, as it has now been revealed to this holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs 
members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel I was made a minister according to the gift of God's grace, which was given to me by the working of his power. To me, though I am very least of all the saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to bring light for everyone what is the plan for mystery hidden in the ages of God who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was according to the eternal purpose that he has realized in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence through our faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Mike. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this day is written in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 2, and will be serving as the basis for today's message. Now after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all of Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem and Judah, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way. And behold, the star that they had seen, when it rose, went before them, and came to rest over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. And they fell down and they worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. And being then warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their own country by another way. Here ends the reading of our gospel. Praise to you, You may be seated. <clears throat> The prayer cards will be collected during this next song, so if you have something on your heart you'd like to offer up with the congregation, please pass it to the elder as he comes by. Yeah. 
Good morning. We have a few announcements uh, this morning. The first one is uh, iDignity. Uh, we're sponsoring iDignity on uh, January, in uh, January, and it's where the homeless can get uh, their birth certificates and other uh, identification that they've either lost or uh, can't get. Uh, so if you would, would like to donate, go to idignity.org slash volunteer, or if you'd like to volunteer also, you must sign up by um, January 10th, and all donations collected throughout the month of January will go to that. Uh, this is the final weekend uh, collecting food and funds. On the 5th, we will collect canned goods for donating to the uh, food pantries, as well as um, funds for the pastoral uh, discretionary fund. And the last one is uh, Wednesday the 9th will be the New Foundations class uh, series uh, put on by Pastor Doug. If anybody's interested, please call the uh, office and uh, put your name on the list. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. It's good to uh, see our folks here at the 930 service, and we had a cantata the first service. We'll have a, another one coming up here at the late service, and so it's a big day here at Trinity, and we're glad you're here as part of it, so thank you. Praise team did a wonderful job again. Let's give them a hand. It's in Ron Logan's contract with us, so we had to honor that. <laughs> we are so glad that you're here. I'd just like to say one of the things that uh, uh, Desiree and I uh, do at our house, and, and we talk about visitors coming. We did talk about visitors, and I'll get to my wife and I here in a sec. But remember when we were back all the way last year uh, in December when we were celebrating just before, during that Christmas Eve time, and then Christmas Sunday before, and then Christmas Day. What we had talked about were visitors that came. We talked about the angel Gabriel being a visitor that came and told Mary that she was going to conceive and bear forth a child. And then Mary went and visited her relative Elizabeth, who had also been told through her husband that they were going to have a baby, even though they were very, very old. You remember the story. And then we see that the very next message was about angels that spoke to uh, shepherds in the field who were watching their flocks by night who then came and, and saw and told uh, them to go and see this newborn Savior, a king. And they went and they saw the place where Jesus was in a stable. And they and the angels that accompanied them celebrated the birth of the newborn king. And now today we're going to be talking about, excuse me, about one more. We have the divine visitation where God himself visited. And Jesus, that is, became flesh and lived and dwelt among us. And that was on Christmas Day. Now Epiphany is about another set of visitors. And that is the visitors who came as wise men. Some of you may have been told the story about the three wise guys who came from afar. And uh, so as a result, we call them wise men. And we also have called them kings. And we've called them a few other things. But they're usually wise men are what we generally call them. And they were visitors from afar. Now, when you see that they came, they brought some things. But uh, going back to my home, when Desiree and I have guests that spend some time with us, we like to give them a, an opportunity to write in our guest book. And as a result, they'll write down a few, few of the thoughts and memories of their trip and their visit with us. And it's been kind of fun to go back over that over the time. Now, we did that recently, and with my dad, uh, we read over some of the things he had said on one of his visits. And then also, when, when, my, uh, when Desiree's mom was there visiting, uh, some of the words that she had written. Now, you must remember and know that my dad and her mom have already gone to glory. And so looking back on those was a true treasure to relive that moment when they were in our house. Today we're really doing that when we look back into God's word about what he has written and recorded over the visit of the wise men. <coughs> and so as a, you start to see this, this recorded visit, I think you will enjoy hearing again. 
And what we need to understand that is sometime after Jesus had been born and Mary and Joseph had relocated from Bethlehem back to Nazareth where Joseph had his carpentry shop and where their home was, we would see that these wise men and their entourage came to visit the king of the Jews. <coughs> what is often overlooked is that these were Gentiles, non-Jews who had come from afar after seeing the star to visit the newborn king of the Jews, who would be a savior of all people, as the prophecies had indicated. I find it fascinating that as Genesis had recorded to Abraham, that J Abraham had been promised by God that one of his descendants that we would track down and trace to be Jesus was going to be a blessing to all nations. Not just to the Jewish people, but to all nations, to the Gentiles as well. Now we see Gentile kings or those from afar coming to worship this Jew, Jewish, non, this non-Gentile new Jewish king <coughs> born as king of the Jews. I find it so fitting to see that all of this is lining up. And I find it so fitting that in our epistle lesson, the second one that Mike read, it says in Ephesians 3, verse 6, this mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and members of the same body and partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Do you see how all of this fits together over centuries, all the way back even into Genesis, it's promised that there would be a Savior born of the woman. And that woman we would see is certainly Mary. And then we have Genesis. We see Abraham's promise. And what we see, we see that it is Jesus, this one seed of Abraham, who is going to be a blessing to all the nations of the world. And who is it that comes but representatives of the rest of the world? The Gentile kings. The Gentile wise men. And so when they arrived for a simple stable where Mary and Joseph had welcomed shepherds and angels, Mary and Joseph now witnessed those who would be coming from afar to give honor to their newborn son. In their home, Mary and Joseph would see these Gentile visitors come from afar bringing gifts. And these were expensive gifts. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. And I want to just say these three gifts actually outline the ministry of Jesus. What do we see gold being used for? It's a gift you would give to a king. Jesus is the king of kings. He's the one that they would come from afar that was answering all these prophecies. There was a star in the sky as it had been predicted. And when you start to see all of this coming together, we start to see the birth of Jesus foretold that he would be born in Bethlehem. We also see that this one who was king would be given lavish gifts of gold. But I'm also reminded that as great as that gift was, that in Peter we are reading in the Bible that we are saved, not with gold or silver, but with the holy and precious blood of Jesus. This newborn babe of Bethlehem was destined to be born as king, deserving of fitting of gold. But he was also destined to be bleed. And he was also destined to be buried. And we see that in these three gifts. We see that the frankincense was a gift that was given because as priests, often they would use frankincense as an incense in the house of God, signaling the presence of God, but also the presence of the high priest in the sanctuary. And so when you and I start to see it, would she be this Jesus, this newborn king, who is going to be the great high priest, who would be the one who would offer up a perfect sacrifice, a one-time sacrifice on Calvary to forgive us and to pay the price and penalty for all of our sins. <coughs> this gift also was very fitting, for it was given for his high priestly duties, frankincense. And then when we come to the myrrh, myrrh is used for burial, embalming, if you will. It would be, the body would be wrapped with these spices to preserve it from the stench of decay. And when you and I start to see all that was being outlined or traced by these three gifts, we would see it prophesied that this newborn Savior would be born, 
yes, as a king, but that he would also bleed as the high priest who would sacrifice himself to pay the price, and that he would be buried, and the frankincense, the gold, and the myrrh all outline this. He had come, and he had come to save the world, and in him all peoples and all nations would be blessed. <coughs> what had happened when the wise men saw the star? They followed it after they'd spoken with King Herod. They followed it to the very place where Jesus was. And Matthew tells us they rejoiced exceedingly. They'd come to the journey, to the, that destination. They saw the gates. They saw the thing they wanted to see. They had come to the right place. And this is where they saw Jesus. And when they came into his presence, and they saw Mary, and they saw Jesus, they knew that he was more than an earthly king. He was an eternal king, as had been foretold of the prophecies of Micah, of Isaiah, and of Genesis, and of Numbers, and elsewhere. This was the king of kings, the Messiah. And they adorned him as the king, bringing him their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, certainly, but they also adorned him. And after they left, they returned to their countries and they told others. I'm overjoyed when God leads people. Like the star led these wise men. Where he leads them to the right place. Where they can see Jesus. I'm pleased when they are brought. And I like the wise men, I like to see them come that one step closer to Jesus. I call this God's delivery room, where you get to see a newborn Christian being born in those first moments where the eyes of faith lighten up and open up and they see Jesus for who he is, their Savior. I love to see the opportunities that they start to see in their life of the acknowledgement of what he has done for them. They love to see the opportunity when they realize their sins have been forgiven. I love to see it when they think and they realize they can talk to him 24-7. I love to find out when they start to open the Bible and they see how much this Jesus loves them. It's a wonderful moment that lasts a lifetime. And I hope and I pray that you get to be in God's delivery room. Because as you and I see this opportunity of faith where God's Holy Spirit stirs in the heart and the mind and the life of someone, that's what the shepherds and the wise men saw. They had come to see Jesus. There's another tradition of Epiphany that talks about people coming and visiting your home. If you look back in the back of the church, you probably won't notice unless I point it out. And be, you can even be so brave as to turn around and just look. But it's right over the back doorpost here in the sanctuary. As you go through those double doors, you'll see some letters and words. As you leave this place, or as you enter, may you always see the Lord. May he always go with you. May he always be with you. Those are the types of words that are said. And I would encourage you to remember what God has done for us here. We've allowed to, been allowed to see Jesus in this place. And as we come today to worship and praise his name, and yes, bringing our gifts, bringing our praise, bringing our prayers of thanks, we do celebrate this King of Kings, this newborn Savior, this one who is sent to save us. And you know how I talked about our guest book? God has a book called The Book of Life, where your names and mine are recorded. And I want you to know that as you and I start to look at that promise found in his word, that you are blessed because you have seen Jesus. And it is my prayer that as you bring people, invite them, that they'll see Jesus in this place as well. But you know, it's not just about here at Trinity within these walls. As important as this place is for that, it can also happen in your home. It can happen in your workplace. But I want you to maybe think about 
writing a blessing over the doorposts of your home. Just a reminder to you and your family, may people see Jesus in this place and in the people who live here. Writing, make your own words up, but allow them to be a blessing to you and to all who have come to the, your home that they would see Jesus. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you this day. And may you be a blessing to those whom you come in contact with. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Please join me now as we make confession of, the word, of our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Bless you. Good morning. The offering will be collected at this time.
It is so good that we're here in your house. Like the wise men who came to visit you, showing up at your house with your mom and with your dad. They worshiped you. We've come to worship you. They brought gifts. We've given gifts. But they also gave you thanks and praise. They worshiped you from their heart. They understood that you were so much more than what they thought. That you've come to give them so many blessings to which they went to their homes and they returned and told others. Oh Lord, may we tell others of the wondrous good deeds that you have done. That you are our Lord, our Savior. And may we see you in this place, but may others see in us you and your greatness in your forgiveness, in your love, as the genuine Lord and Savior of our life. And may they too want to have that. Oh Lord, we ask this in your holy name that you would bless us as we seek you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now, O oh Lord, hear the prayers that have been requested this day. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks today for our worshiping you and to bring to you the needs of your people. Lord, we bring to you Tammy, who is in diabetic coma. Lord, we ask that you'd heal her and to comfort her and her loved ones and be with her and to bless her. Lord, we also bring forward to you the family of the two truck drivers and the five children that lost their lives in the accident on I-75. We'd ask that you'd comfort them and give them peace as they grieve. Lord, we also pray for those uh, needing your healing that are hospitalized and, for, and having other health concerns. We pray for Rita, for Michael, for John, and for Scott, Sandy, Malia, Randy, Rose, Jim, Catherine, Corey, Larry, Herman, and Patty, and Gail, Terry, Hazel, Carolyn, Zachary, Emma, Donna, Kelly, Dean, Hudson, and Adam. Lord, we ask for your healing, comfort, and your blessings. Lord, we give you thanks for Pastor Doug for shepherding this congregation and be with him and with your blessing. We give to you thanks for this gathering and for the ministries here. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, I also pray for Craig Feebigger, my brother-in-law, who will be <coughs> installed and ordained into ministry in Franklin, Tennessee. Next weekend, I ask your blessing to be upon his ministry and upon his uh, blessing that he will bring to that congregation. And we ask you, Lord Jesus, that you would bless him and his, as he and his wife serve you faithfully. Lord, you have raised him up from within that congregation and we celebrate that event and ask your blessing to be upon Faith Lutheran Church and upon vicar, soon to be pastor, Craig Feebigger. Lord, in your mercy. And now, Lord, hear the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, he gave thanks, and he gave it unto them, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given unto death for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, in the same manner, he took the cup, and when he had supped, he gave thanks, he gave it unto them, saying, Take and drink ye all of it, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is given and is shed for you, for the remission of all your sins. As often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. 
You may be seated.
unto you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious. May the Lord himself lift up his countenance upon you and bring you his peace. Amen.
peace and serve the Lord with joy. Happy New Year to all. Bye.